High flow nasal cannula. We are continuing on non-invasive pressure ventilation. I kind of included this here because it provides some positive pressure while using them. And I'll explain in a second. Basically, from its name, it's a nasal cannula and we use a high flow oxygen. And high flow, I'm not saying 10 or 15. This machine provided up to 40 liter per minute. And they provide up to 100% FiO2. And the one we use in our hospital and in most hospital, it's a brand name called VapoTherm. So when we say vapor there, we mean this high flow nasal canyon. Basically, this machine provide a heated and humidified air at this rate or any rate we want, 20, 30, 40 liters, and to be given through small bore nasal cannula. Very important to use small bore, otherwise it won't work. It will be like regular bores. So when we have an air, let's go this tube and then let's say make sure it's narrow. Look at this. If you have an air going through this, if it goes through uh, at this rate, 40 liters, let's say, per minute, if it goes into a small tube, the velocity will increase, right? Without going into the physics, but common sense. When you make the surface area that this air going through the velocity will be higher so this is going through the nose downward now how this high velocity air velocity will help as you know there's something called anatomical dead space the space that doesn't participate in gas exchange our mouth upper airways all the way down to the bronchioles so this can be a reservoir of previously expired gas a reservoir of co2 so this high velocity will go there and create this turbulence and wash out this gas instead of having a high content co2 gas sitting after each expiration this anatomical space now this will be washed out and we have gas actually high with oxygen ready to be breathe uh, to be sucked in by the patient or pushed in into the patient airways so that's a major advantage of this high flow nasal cannula one of the big things about it so that's one thing the other thing because of this this will improve or decrease work of breathing of course and this work of breathing will be decreased because of multiple things one of them is the decreasing or washing the co2 out of the anatomical dead space and having a high or rich oxygen um, uh, um, content ready for inhalation so that's one thing the second thing that the air is heated and humidified so it's easy to breathe and the thing it can provide CPAP effect a continuous pressure positive pressure because of this high velocity going through continuously can create this effect up to actually they're saying eight centimeter h2o effect so we have that effect as well that will kind of stain the airway and push the air in and help create this positive pressure in the chest so that's how high flow nasal can be. now when you use it, you need to provide what's the FiO2, maximum 100%, what's the flow rate, and maximum for adults 40 liters per minute. I think for kids 8 liters per minute. You just need to provide that and watch the patient, how the patient does and monitor them. When to use them, as again, is we said BiPAP or non-invasive ventilation try to avoid mechanical or invasive ventilation, right? And I personally, I still feel the BiPAP is better and more reliable. But if the patient cannot handle it or cannot, kind of has claustrophobia, cannot use the BiPAP, is uncomfortable or refusing, and this high flow nasal cannula or vapotherm can be used instead and mainly in acute hypoxic 
respiratory failure because of this effect and this effect is having a high oxygen content and anatomical dead space ready to be inhaled and the CPAP effect now to use it in hypercapnia there is a debate about it but the the the, the manufacturer of the verb term saying we can use it in hypercapnia because of this effect the anatomical dead space decrease the CO2 wash CO2 out of anatomical dead space and fill it with oxygen so again my advice used by PAP and use vapor of therm if the patient is refusing to use the CPAP or BiPAP. So it may help, of course, in pulmonary edema and it may help again hypercapnia, but again, this is debatable. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released. Glad to have you on board.